Alright everyone, welcome to part 3 of Distant Worlds 2. Um, I'll go ahead and switch over to the screen here. So we got our planet here, um, same one since the thumbnail, took a nice thumbnail out. Um, we're still learning. It's, uh, I know it can, it's, uh, it'll be kind of rough here for the first, like, however many episodes it takes me to get through the tutorials. Uh, but I promise I will, in fact, start playing the game at that point. Um, we'll get some gameplay after we learn how to play, because um, I really don't know how to play. And I know there's other people who don't know how to play, and I figure a lot of people don't go like going through the tutorial. So if I go through the tutorial, uh, then you don't have to go through the tutorial. So just uh, sit back and relax, or uh, skip ahead in the playlist until I get past the tutorials, whatever you want to do. So here we go. Uh, next tour, it's called, not a tutorial, but tour, uh, is colonies. Colonies are the populated worlds in your empire. They provide most of the wealth and income of your empire. You take a portion of that income by taxing your colonies. Over time, colonies grow in both population and development level. Larger, more developed colonies provide higher income. To grow your colonies faster and have them develop more, you should work to keep the population happy as well as providing them with abundant construction and luxury resources. That, that uh, wine that our people are known for. Luxury. Um, by the way, I, I noticed on some of my other videos when I, I reading or I start talking about something and get off track, I tend to get quieter. Um, which resulted in uh, some of the things I say coming out, like I was mumbling and not really talking loud enough. Um, so I'm, I am going to try to uh, talk louder. Um, and I might turn my mic up just a little bit. Okay, well, that's all the way up. So um, hopefully you guys hear me well. Um, colony list. This screen lists all of the colonized worlds in your empire. Check the various sort and filter options at the top of the panel. Sort and filter option. Oh, okay. There we go. Sort them by these things. Uh, when zoomed out to the galaxy or system level, the colony locations are highlighted on the map. Hovering over an item. Uh, hovering over an item in the list will ping the location on the map. Clicking the item will select it. Double clicking the item will move to that location. Each list shows the population level, approval rate, development level, and tax income from each colony. Clicking a colony in the list will select the colony. It will also open the colony detail panel at the right. Double clicking the colony will move the view to the colony. You can also open the colony detail panel by hovering over the arrow at the far right of the list item. The colony detail panel provides a complete summary of your colony. It also has an expanded set of options for managing your colony. This screen lists all of the potential new colonies you can target. Check the extensive sort and filter options at the top of the panel. Okay, same thing. Uh, potential, these are the potential new colonies. Um, same thing, zoomed out, pinging thing. Uh, you can queue colonization. So if the potential new colony is already inhabited by an independent alien race, an independent colony, then the race and population level is shown, along with the current chance of successfully colonizing the independent colony, i.e. how likely they are to welcome your joining your empire. The button at the right allows you to queue colonization of the planet or moon. This will build a colony ship. Fill it with colonists from one of your colonies and then send the new colony ship to the target world to colonize. Alternatively, if a suitable colony ship already exists in your empire, this may instead be used to colonize the new world. Alright, so cool. If we didn't have, already have a colony ship, it'll build it, but if we do already have a colony ship, it'll just use that. Dangerous locations. A red lightning bolt symbol will be shown next to the location name if the location is considered dangerous. A location is dangerous when there are unclear threats present, like pirates or deadly space creatures. Non-military ships will not travel to a dangerous location. 
The threats must first be cleared by military ships or fleet. This means that while you can queue construction of a new colony at a dangerous location, colony ships will not travel there until the threats are cleared. Colony ships are special transport ships that can load huge number of colonists that are sent to colonize a new world for your empire. When colony ships reach their destination, they are disassembled and the raw resources used in establishing the new colony. Thus, colony ships can only be used to colonize a single world. You must build a new colony ship for each world you want to colonize. Uh, colony ship list. The screen, this screen, which has no army ships. Check the sort. Uh, this screen lists all of the colony ships in your empire. Check the sort filter options at the top of one panel. Uh, same thing, if you hover over it, it'll ping it. It's the same as the planet description. Automation status. You you change the automation status of the colony ship using the button at the far right. Okay, so there would be a button over here to autom automate the uh, colonizing. Alright. Planetary facilities. You actually have one of those. All right. Plan planetary facilities are built at colonies in your empire. They provide various bonuses or new capabilities for the colony. Some facilities allow recruitment of new troop types. Others provide ground-based weapons to defend the colony. Other facilities give bonuses to governance, reducing corruption and improving happiness and thus increasing the income from the colony. New facilities are enabled through research. Examine the projects in the research screen to see what facilities you can unlock. Building new facilities. To build a new facility at a colony, select the colony and use the Build Facilities Action button under the selection panel. This will present a list of buttons with all of the facilities that can be built at the colony. Hover over each button for a summary of the facility. Click a button to pay the construction costs and begin building the facility. Build new, select the colony, and use the build. Oh, okay. Uh, this screen lists all of the planetary facilities, wonders, and ruins at colonies at your empire. Check the sort and filter options. Okay, sort and filter and the pinging probably. Yeah. Um, hovering over, yep, okay, got it. Next one, artifacts. This list, this screen lists all the artifacts owned. Artifacts are objects that you can acquire through exploration. They typically provide bonuses to your empire or to their location. Sometimes artifacts must be at a colony or at your capital to provide their benefits. And then the whole zooming and pinging thing. Uh, re explained again. So another tour down. And a few to go still. <laughs> Let's see where we were at exploration. Yep. All right, exploration involves sending out exploration ships to visit unknown worlds, revealing their resources, colonization suitability, and any special bonuses. They may also encounter ancient ruins or abandoned ships or bases that can be investigated. Locations can be explored to varying levels. Initial exploration reveals more obvious data, like the quality of a planet or surface level resources, but other items may be hidden at deeper levels of exploration. This can include bonuses, ancient ruins, resources, or even rare artifacts. Exploring at a deeper level requires better components with a higher rating, either survey modules or exploration scanners. At each location, the exploration ship sends out survey teams to inspect the planet. Surveying is slow and time-consuming. Higher tech levels unlock exploration scanner components that allow faster exploration. However, slower survey teams can still be use, useful to explore a location more thoroughly and thus uncover deeply hidden items. The exploration ship list. This screen lists all the exploration ships in your empire, sort and filters, zoom out, it'll ping, change the automation right here. Uh, and the exploration map overlay. When the exploration ships list is open, the exploration galaxy map overlay is auto-enabled, showing the exploration status for each system. 
green systems are fully explored, while yellow systems are partially explored. So we'll leave our own system. So this should be yellow. So, well, I mean, it is partially explored. I don't see where the green and the yellow come in. There's a. I mean, it's a yellow star, but. Those are yellow too, and then this one's blue. So. I don't know. Okay. Well, whatever. We know it's not fully explored. Known ruins. Exploration may occasionally review ancient ruins at some locations. These ruins can hold secrets and other items of value. This screen lists all of the ruins you have encountered while exploring the galaxy. When zoomed out to the galaxy or system level, the ruin locations are highlighted on the map. Hovering over an item in the list will ping the location on that. So we've got the ping thing going on again. Uh, each list shows relevant bonuses. So I got plus 9% colony development and plus 10% scenery on my uh, Darian homeworld here. Uh, you can acquire research bonuses by building a research station at the location. You can acquire scenery bonuses by building a resort base at the location. Hovering over a ruin in the list will also show a detailed summary panel at the right. So if I click that, can I click, well that just gave me the colony, not necessarily this. All right. Exploration may occasionally reveal abandoned ships or bases. These may hold important information that you can obtain when you board and investigate. They can usually also be salvaged by sending a construction ship to repair them. This screen lists all of the known abandoned ships and bases that you have encountered while exploring the galaxy. Um, and then the whole click it, and double click it, and ping, and the button at the far right allows you to queue uh, repair and investigate location of the abandoned ship or base. This will send a construction ship to repair the item. So yeah, there'll be a button here if we find one. And then finally the special locations tab. Sometimes exploration can reveal unusual locations. These may include fields of ship debris from ancient battles or other even stranger phenomena. This screen lists all of the known special locations that you have encountered while exploring the galaxy, the zoom, hover, ping thing again. Explained again. Making good progress on this one. Uh, resources and mining. Resources. All of these. There are, with this game I remember there being like hundreds of resources. Um, and you know, this is just some of them, the ones I've found so far. Um, it tells you their value here, but let's go ahead and read this because I'm sure they'll talk all about it. Uh, resources are the raw materials found at planets, moons, and asteroids. These can include metallic ores, gases, minerals, textiles, food and beverages, and many other items. You can mine these resources, extracting them for use in your empire. Some resources are used in constructing new ships and, based and bases, and improving growth in your colonies. Other resources are used to raise the development of your colonies. These are luxury resources, and one resource, Kazlon, is used as a universal reactor fuel. Do have any Kazlon? I do. Or, no, I don't, and I'm having to buy it, it looks like, because there's a shortage. Uh, this screen lists all of the resources in the galaxy. By default, the resources are filtered to show only the fuel and construction resources that your empire is currently using. The default sort order prioritizes resources where your empire has a production shortage. Check the sort and filter settings up here uh, for more options. Other filter options include showing luxury resources that add to the development of your colonies. Sort options include mining rates. 
and number of resources and stockpile levels in your empire. Resource flow map overlay. I played with this earlier today. Um, clicking on a single resource in list filters the resource flow map overlay to only show the cargo transport for the selected resource. Um, so we'll be able to see like the flow, like if we're mining something over here and bring it to the home, we'll be able to see that we like a line here. It'll show us that they're importing it from here where they're where they're mining it, and then they're bringing it over to our home. Mining locations. We only have one. It's our home world right now. Um, once we get going, we'll have a lot more. Uh, this screen lists all of the current mining locations in your empire. This includes colonies and mining stations. Check the sort and filter options at the top of the panel. You can filter by individual resources to quickly identify all the locations for a particular resource in your empire. When zoomed out to the galaxy or system level and the the mining locations are highlighted on the map. Hovering over an item in the list will ping uh, to the old map explanation and hovering and pinging thing explain again. Alright, so this screen lists potential new mining locations that you can target. These locations are where you should build new mining stations. So here we have a moon moon of our planet. Um, at some point I must have explored it, or they just explored it automatically one or the other. Here's an exploration vehicle right next to it, so I assume that's where we figured this out. Um, and it's saying that we have 59% steel, or 2.24 per second. We got an Aculon. So Aculon ore is found. Um, and then Mebnar, very dense metal smelted from Mebnar ore. Uh, particularly useful as heavy shielding in reactor components. Um, so you can filter it, you can zoom, you can hover over it to make it ping. Um, it shows the known resources and the abundance. So this is the abundance I was talking about. Uh, queuing new mining stations. The button, this one, at the right allows you to queue construction of a new mining station at the location. When the next construction ship becomes available, it will build a mining station here. You can click the button again to cancel it. So click it, builds it, click it again, cancels it. I, I do want to build it though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it built. Uh, if you cannot build at the location, the queue button will be disabled. So. If it was grayed out or something, I wouldn't be able to click it. Uh, same with the dangerous locations. So, you know, if there's threats present, our civilian ships won't go nearby, so you'll queue it up to be built, but it'll never get built because there's stuff in the way. Uh, mining ships are mobile resource extraction ships. They travel to mining locations to mine resources there. Once they have a full load, then they return the extracted resources to the nearest spaceport. So it'll fly from one of these is our spaceport. Our spaceport here, fly over here to the moon, and then back to the spaceport. Uh, mining ships are part of your civilian economy, so we don't control them. So you cannot normally assign missions to them. Instead, they seek out mining locations on their own, preferring resources that are in high demand. And so on the resource page, we saw whatever was in the had the biggest shortage and was worth the most that's what they'll they'll go after yeah they'll go after whatever's worth the most on their own um, let's see so you can then choose where each mining ship will mine by selecting and right clicking on the target okay so some of the government styles will let you control the mining ships I don't think Republic does I'm pretty sure they don't uh, mining ship list, okay, that's the whole zoom in and out and hover over it and it'll ping type of things. So that's the rest of that. Fuel tankers. This is one thing when I played the game last time. I understand. Although when I read the patch notes, it seemed like they weren't working right back when I played them anyway. So that's probably why I couldn't figure it out, because they weren't working right. <laughs> um, but 
Here we go. Fuel tankers travel around refueling ships that are low on fuel. When you assign fuel tankers to a fleet, they will give priority to refueling ships in their fleet. They can then they can mine fuel from any location with a fuel resource, but they prefer to load fuel from a spaceport or colony because this is usually a quicker way to obtain fuel. Um, this list here is where it'll list them all, and you can zoom, and it'll ping, and all that good stuff. Where are we at? We're at 20 minutes of time. We're making good time. Doing good on these. Next is construction. Uh, this button opens the designs list. Oh, yeah. This, this one. Okay. This button opens the designs list where you can see all of the ship and base designs for your empire. From this list, you can view or edit designs or create new designs. Adding a new ship new design involves selecting a ship hole and then adding components to design in the ship design screen. I'm supposed to click this. So when you click it, you get all this stuff. That's a nice sound. Um, Alright, so then you can click on them and then you hit like edit and then it'll give you the option of adding engines and research labs and fuel cells and crew and cargo bays and command centers and particle beams and just all of this and you gotta pay attention to, this, to the statistics over here and how well it moves um, and it's defense and it's attack it's just like everything all that for a friend this is an ore hauler so um, but we're going to cancel because we're not actually going to edit this. Uh, close this and back to the. Back to what I was saying. I don't think it was going to have me click in there. That's why I wanted to look at it real quick. I clicked the wrong one. Apparently, there is a tour for this. Okay, yeah. So that's where we were, and, and then I started going rogue on it. Um, next is construction yards. Construction yards are where you build new ships for your empire. This includes spaceports, which are usually the fastest way to build new ships. The colonies can also build ships and bases. This screen lists all of the current construction yards in your empire. Check the sort and filter options at the top of the panel. You can sort by constructing like construction speed or current construction wait time. Uh, then zooming and hovering and pinging. Uh, each list item shows the current construction wait time. Is there anything being built? Oh yeah, this is okay. It's gonna be 62 seconds more for that and 493 seconds for, uh, oh, they're building a construction here, okay. Also shown are the ships or bases in the construction queue, including any ships incoming for repair or retrofit, not yet arrived. Hover over each ship or base for more details, including construction progress percentage. Hovering over a list item will also display a summary panel to the right. This summary shows how many individual construction yards the location has. It also shows the current wait time and the build and repair speeds. So. My home planet here has one construction yard, and the uh, wait time is 493 seconds. Build speed 2.15 per second. This screen lists colonies where you can build new spaceports. Check the sort and filter options at the top of the panel. I don't have anything found yet. Uh, you, can, you can zoom and ping and click and double click to go to the thing just like everything else uh, button at the right allows you to queue construction of a new spaceport at the colony but I don't have any listed uh, and if you cannot build at the location it's disabled a tooltip on the button will explain why you can't build there okay good got a couple of construction ships here 
Construction ships are mobile construction yards. They build bases of various types, mining stations, research stations, resort bases, monitoring stations. They can also repair immobile damaged ships. They can even repair abandoned ships and bases encountered through exploration. Building a new base requires construction resources. So the first action a construction ship takes when assigned a construction mission is to travel to the nearest spaceport to load the required construction resources. Uh, the construction ship list. Uh, this screen lists all of the construction ships. You can zoom and ping and all that stuff. And then the automation status is here. Um, yeah, so next. Build order. The build order screen provides a quick way to build a large number of ships. Yeah, I was trying to do this. I've been doing it wrong. The, um, each row lists a single ship roll along with an amount field. Change the amount to build in the numeric field. Oh, it worked. I, remember, I think maybe we didn't have a shipyard built yet, because when I was clicking this episode one, just like nothing was happening. It was like, it was clicking, it was just like not moving. All right. Uh, once you have sent the amount and design you want to build for each roll, click the purchase button. So you click that and then you click purchase. Uh, at the top of the panel to buy the new ships and begin construction. The new ships will be built at the best available construction yard in your empire. Often this means using multiple construction yards spread throughout your empire. So this kind of seems like the better way to build. Uh, per roll map overlay, if you click on a roll now, you can then specify the amount and build location of each new ship by left clicking on the yellow construction yard badges shown at the galaxy level. Per, per roll map overlay. I don't see that. Well, I'm sure it'll come up sometime later and then I'll actually need to know. Alright, that's a lesson to be learned some other time. Yeah, one. Um, although the next one is in fact the ship design screen. Here we go. Uh, the ship design screen allows you to create a new design for a ship, base, or fighter. You generate a new design by adding components to the base in a hole. Your new design must meet many requirements oh, excuse me, to be considered valid. For example, all designs must have a command center. Right there, command center. Uh, all designs must store fuel to generate energy from a reactor. Uh, so their fuel cell storage, fuel storage it says right there. Um, and then all ships must have engines to be mobile. So we got ion engine and thrusters. There are many more requirements specific to each role. Check the recommendations button and pop-out panel as you add components to your design at the top of the design summary panel. Some recommendations are optional, shown in yellow. Other recommendations are compulsory, shown in red. Um, so if I hover over this, it'll pop out this thing over here, and it's in yellow. So it's basically telling me I don't have the supply of the resources needed to, to build the ship right now, which is... I barely unpaused the game. I accidentally unpaused for a little while, otherwise it hasn't even run yet. Um, so we don't currently have a supply of those, but we will. We'll get a supply of those. I remember seeing Mebnar on the on the moon, so we know we'll get that. And I think Steel was on there too, so we'll get it. Available components. The available components list shows all of the researched components that are available to add to the design. Only components that are valid for the role are shown. Thus, fighters do not see any ship components, and vice versa. Components will also be excluded if they are too large for any bays in the hull. You can further 
fil filter the components using the drop down list. I just realize am I in the way? Uh, I don't know. How uh, about I just turn it off? There we go. I'm, I'm not going to be in. You just don't want to see me anyway. Um, so we got uh, all kinds of stuff going on over here too. The movement. Um, and then I was pointing out the energy usage. I don't think you guys could see any of that when I was pointing it out earlier. Uh, you can further filter the components using drop down list. Okay, so that and that. Let's pick which, which ones we need. Uh, you can support the components, okay. As you hover over each component, a pop-up summary will appear to the right. So, pops up that over there and tells tells me... Uh... Okay, so I have fuel cell selected right now. Get out of here. Um, I have fuel cell selected, so when I hover over something else, it'll compare it to whatever I am hovering over, which, you know, is apples to oranges here. They're Comparing a fuel cell to a space reactor isn't exactly the same thing, but that's handy that it does that for when you are comparing two things similar. Okay, next. Design bays. The design bay list shows all of the component bays in the whole. The components added to the design bays list is the core of the design. The components added here define the capabilities and behavior of the design. Each bay has a type and size. You can only place components in a bay when it is matching, when it is a matching type, and when the component size fits within the bay. There are six component bay types. Each bay type only allows certain types of components. General, this is the white section, are command centers, crew quarters, fuel cells, reactors, hyperdrives, cargo bays, passenger compartments, troop compartments, mining engines, energy collectors, and all others. Weapons, red, are weapons or tractor beams. Engines, in yellow, are engines and vectoring engines. Defense, in blue, I believe. Yeah, in blue. Armor shields are damage control. Hangers. Don't have any of that bay type here. Um, and sensors, which is green. Just scanners, countermeasures, targeting computers, survey modules, scanners, and scanner jammers. Scanner jammers. To add a component to a bay, select the desired component from the available components list. So up here, I would select engine. Find a bay of the matching type and adequate size. It's down here. This size 20, size 50. Left click in the bay to place the component. Hey, works. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cancel this. I'm not gonna save it. But yeah, I added. I think I added more engines, um, which probably helps it go faster. But there's probably some kind of a energy problem with that. That's why it wasn't like that in the first place. So. When you hover over a bay that already contains a component, a pop-up comparison window will be displayed. This allows you to quickly see the differences between them. Right-click a bay to remove an existing component. Huh. Okay. I did it. External bays. Note that some component bays are external on the preview model. In other words, they can be seen on the exterior of the ship or base. External bays are shown in the design bays list by a view icon at the left. So engines, weapons, and the scanner can all be seen on the outside of the ship. the weapon um, and the defense that we have not enough. Design preview. The center of the screen shows a preview of the design. You can rotate the view by holding down the right mouse button and 
moving the mouse left, right, and up and down. Use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in or out. Uh, external bays. The external bays are shown on the preview by a spherical marker. The color of the marker matches the type of the bay. You can toggle the external bay markers on or off using the button at the right of the tactical settings area. Tactical settings. tactical settings are, but this is the button. Turn it off and on, if you want. You can also do the following, right? Click a bay position in the preview to remove an existing component. Oops. Something. Good thing I'm not saving this. Uh, engine placement. Note that when you add engines to a ship design, the actual bay where the engine is added may be different to the bay you selected. This is because engines must remain symmetrical and thus all will always be added on alternating sides of the design. Oh, okay, so when I added that engine like that and it moved them all down to the bottom, I thought I messed something up. But it has to remain symmetrical. Okay, that makes sense. Design overview displays all of the current stats for your design. The value in this panel change. The value in this panel the values in this panel change as you add and remove components to the whole. There are many sections to the design overview showing data on various aspects of the design. Much of the data has further information when hovered over. At the top is the design name. Click here to type a new name. Ah. Name ships. Uh, next is the recommendations button. This shows a summary of any warnings or errors in the current design. Hover over the recommendations button to pop out a larger summary panel. Uh, click the button to lock the recommendations panel open. The design is not valid and cannot be saved until any errors are resolved. Core design information. Next is a summary of the key design data. This includes information about the purchase and maintenance costs. It also outlines some important requirements. The design cannot be larger than the maximum size allowed by the whole. There must be adequate crew for the design. The rating section summarizes data about the design in four key areas. Attack strength, defense strength, speed, and maneuvering, and scanners. Hover over each value for a breakdown of the factors that contribute to the rating in each area. Energy, the energy section summarizes the energy generation, storage, and distribution in the design. It also shows graphs outlining how energy is consumed, both at sublight, speeds, in combat, and during hyperspace travel. For bases, only one graph is shown. Okay, so we got energy usage, this is the output, this is the weapons, so let's see. We output 54, the weapons use 2.5, so that's that purple. The uh, blue is cruise speed, maybe? At 8. It's the next smallest one. Um, and then the next one, light blue, maybe the top speed energy usage. Uh, green is the biggest usage, so that's probably static energy usage. Or, yeah, yeah. Static energy usage is then so I've got like a 23 energy surplus going on here. Well, this is 23, this is 37. Maybe it's 37 when sitting still and 23 when it's moving. That's my guess. Uh, this ship shows the reactor fuel usage, which has a direct impact on how quickly a ship needs to refuel. uses Caslon. Uh, I can go 501,000. I don't know what it's using for um, units of... 
how far it's talking about, like 501,000 meters? Kilometers, probably. All right, let's see how far. This movement, this this section. This section is only relevant to ships. It shows the movement speed and energy usage at various levels. Also shown here is the hyperdrive jump range and overall fuel range. Um, so this ship doesn't isn't equipped with the hyperdrive. Um, so at sl in slow speed, it uses zero energy. Cruise speed, 98, it goes eight energy. And then if it's sprinting, it goes 112 speed whatever unit of speed, uh, and it uses 11.2 energy. So the ship will exit the jump at a price minus. Okay. So it's talking about the fuel range, how far you can get with one tank of fuel. Uh, weapon section down here. So... The weapon section outlines weapon ranges and damage rates per second across various weapon categories. I think I took my weapon off. Let's put that back on. There we go. Hovering over the weapon damage graph reveals further information. Yep. Um, also shown are the fighter capacity and build rate. So I have no fighter capacity or build rate. Defense. The defense section shows the shield armor and damage repair values. Shield uh, damage reduction, so that's armor and repair. Oh, there's armor there too. Also shown in the boarding defense strength. Boarding, boarding, boarding. There it is. Targeting and counting countermeasures. This section is down here. This section shows the targeting and countermeasures bonuses. Improved targeting makes weapons more accurate and more likely to strike their target. Improved countermeasures make a design more able to throw off enemy weapons and thus avoid damage. Sensors. The sensor section outlines the strength and range of a variety of different scanner types. General short and long range scanners are for detecting distant ships, hyper jump tracking of enemy ships when they jump away from your location, trace scanning of in internal information about nearby vessels, scanner jamming that protects against scanning by enemies. Um, we've got industry. The industry section has values for various industrial categories like cargo storage, docking bay, throughput, mining, research, and others. Um, we've got bonuses. Ship speed and ship maneuvering are both we've got bonuses in those. Um, and then resources required to build. So this is what resources I need and how many of them to build this ship. Okay. Tactical settings. Use the tactical settings. I guess that's this. Oh, okay. So this whole thing is the tactical settings. Okay. Use the tactical settings buttons to set the default tactics for the new design. These default tactics will be used for new ships and bases using the design. Once ships are built, they can set their own tactics, but their initial tactics are from their design. Um, so you can tell it, you know, it should be invading colonies, or it should retreat when 20% of non-defense components are damaged, or it should... Or, okay, so you can set and attack status against stronger ones, against weaker ones, uh, and you can set its engagement range, how far away it should go to engage something. Okay. Um, and then you can save and exit, or cancel. I am going to hit cancel. Alright, so that'll be the end of part three. Um, we have how many tutorials left? Research, research screen, military, and civilian. I'm going to finish up those four probably all in the next video because I don't think any of those have enough meat to them. The ship design is probably the most complex one here. Um, and we'll just like uh, plow through those in part four um, and then we can actually get to playing the game. Um, 
and uh, yeah, and then hopefully it's helping everybody learn how to play. I know it was pretty rough learning uh, for me when I first came out. And I wanted to give it another chance, and I figured this time I should probably go through the tutorials and really learn how to play without having the computer automate everything, because then I'm just pretty much watching another AI faction and hoping it does better than the other AI factions. And maybe like controlling a few things here and there. Alright, well thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on uh, part four.